Mention the name Bruce Landon and you think of a former pro hockey goalie turned team president and owner who played a major role in keeping professional hockey in the city of Springfield. But Bruce Landon wears another hat these days, that of author. Landon has written a book entitled The Puck Stops Here in honor of his daughter Tammy, who died last year from cancer at the age of 43. Connecting Points' Ray Herschel sat down with Landon to talk about his career and the book honoring his daughter. Well, it was really my daughter Tammy, Ray. We were, after I retired in May of 2017, we were sitting out in my deck and we are having a cocktail and I got telling stories, just stories of my growing up and stories from behind the scenes and in, in the hockey industry. And she was intrigued by it. She was a writer, a grant writer for Clark School. And she said, Dad, start writing that stuff down. And I said, well, nobody wants to read my stuff. Why don't <laughs> she kept prodding me and prodding me and start you know, start writing things down. And, and she was a writer and she says, I'll edit it for you. We'll see what, where it goes and we'll have some fun with it. And so that's where it originally got started. And uh, so I started playing with it a little bit and uh, started trying to find a way to get some structure into it and got frustrated and walked away from it a number of times and said, this, I can't do this. And she, every time I say I couldn't do it, she'd say, yes, you can uh, believe in me. Will you? will you just trust me that you can do this? So that's how it originally got started. Yeah. And Tammy, of course, unfortunately passed away from cancer last year at the young age of 43. For those who haven't had the pleasure of knowing her or meeting her, tell us a little bit about your daughter. Uh, without getting too emotional, most wonderful person anyone would ever meet. Uh, could make you laugh out loud, uh, loved to get into conversation about anything, but was just loved to have a good time, loved to make you laugh, loved to smile, enjoyed life immensely. And uh, I tried to capture some of the stuff that she wanted in the book. And uh, unfortunately, as I said, she, or you said, she came down with cancer. And when she came down with cancer, I just didn't want to write the book. I put it on the back shelf. And, uh, you know, after she was diagnosed with cancer and went through chemo and she made me make a commitment to her, I would pick it up and start over again. But a wonderful young lady, very smart, uh, like I said, intelligent, funny, great athlete, uh, all Western Mass and a couple sports, and just a, just a joy to be around. She's a wonderful, wonderful woman, for sure. Uh, and the proce proceeds from the book now are going to the Clark School. Uh, it, it's actually going to the what I started, my wife and I started the TJL Charitable sure. Foundation. It's called TJ, Tammy Jacobs from Landon, I Can Hear You Now Scholarship Fund. And uh, we decided to do that. It was probably three or four hours after my daughter had passed and I was laying in my bed and I said, I was, you know, we were very emotional obviously. And I said, we have to do something to honor her. And, and uh, the reason it was, I, it was called, I can hear you now is because the final words when we were talking to Tammy as she was passing, the nurse who was in the room said, she can hear you. And uh, that resonated with me. And uh, my final words to her were, I love you, Tammy, dad finished the book. And she turned to me and, and had a little smile on her face. And so I know, I know down deep she knows I finished the book. And uh, I know she's, uh, she'd be proud of, of the outcome as well. For sure, no question about it. And speaking of that book, I know you've had book signings uh, in the area and so forth. Can you tell us how, uh, how the sale of the book is going so far? Has it uh, been up to your expectations? You know, I didn't know what to expect. I've never written a book before. Uh, my publisher, the Springfield Re Republican, Wayne Fanoff, did a phenomenal job down there. Uh, when I called them a few weeks ago and told them where I was with book sales, they were they were astonished. They were really proud of the amount of books I had sold. And uh, it's it's hard because you sell usually one at a time. It's not like somebody comes in and buys 100 from you. So, And I did not purposely didn't want to go on Amazon or at any bookstores because 100% uh, uh, of the proceeds are going to Tammy Scholarship Foundation. And uh, so I wanted to make sure, be a little greedy and, and keep all the money for the foundation. But the book sales are going very, very well. There are people who will be watching this uh, this program wondering, what's the best way for me to, to buy a book? I, I'm interested. I'd like to buy the book. Uh, where can they go again? Well, the best, the, probably the easiest way now is just go BruceLandonConsulting.com. And that's my website. And it's all about the book. And there's a click buttons on there. There's PayPal. Uh, there's ways that you can click if you want a book signed. I will ship the book to you personally. And uh, since we launched the website, which has only really been about 10 days now, not even 10 days, uh, we've already generated a number of sales from it. So that's the easiest way. Or if people don't want to go on a website, they can email me at uh, nlandon30 at gmail.com. And I also respond to every email I get and send the book out and give people the information where to send the check. And uh, they can do it that way as well.
Bruce, you said this uh, writing a book was obviously a new experience for you, having right. uh, had a professional career in hockey. Uh, did you learn anything or have you learned anything from writing the book that you hadn't expected when you first started? Anything uh, you, you didn't expect? Well, I, what I tried to do, Ray, was I, I wanted, when I decided I was going to write the book, I didn't want it to be a typical hockey book. I wanted it to sort of be a behind the scenes look at not only my life, but, and it wasn't supposed to be my life, that's just the way it, it worked out, but sort of behind the scenes look at everything that goes on in professional hockey hockey from my playing days to my management days, lease negotiations, I wanted affiliation agreements, stories about players, and I wanted to make the book so that anybody could pick it up and read it, whether it was a, a lady who perhaps was not a big hockey fan but was sort of interested. And what, what I learned is how difficult it is to write a book. <laughs> I, was, I, I don't yeah. think it will ever be a sequel, let's put it that way. Uh, that's what I learned most. I, very frustrating uh, for somebody like myself who had never written a book before, but I had a great editor and Ron Shamelis who uh, guided me and helped me with structure, and he was phenomenal right from the, from, from the get-go, and it wouldn't have happened without Ron's involvement as well. It's a great book. I read it, uh, and the, the stories, the anecdotes in the book are just, uh, just fantastic. Um, as you look back at your career uh, as a professional hockey goalie through the management level, as you described, um, did one phase or the other uh, agree with you more? Did you enjoy being more a player or a manager or did you get satisfaction from both? You know, you get satisfaction from both for different reasons. Uh, you know, when you come out of Canada as I did and was drafted and was labeled a pretty good goaltender, one of the best coming out of Canada at the time, but then all the injuries sort of, as I talk about in the book, the injuries pretty much put an end to my playing career. But what I found when I get into the management side is I love the business challenge. And I think to this day, uh, now that I've been retired a couple of years, I, I miss the business challenge. And we had our challenges over there of making making things work and trying to make a profit and trying to do well for the investors. And I, I really miss the business challenges, even even when the things weren't going so well. I think you miss the when you retire, you miss the camaraderie with the players, that kind of thing. But I was able to stay in the game my whole life, so I was always around the game. But I really miss the business side of it, which is surprising because I didn't think I would. But that's that's the part of me I still I still enjoy the most. I think. You will always be remembered in the Springfield area, obviously, as one of the key major players in keeping professional hockey in the city and not losing it. Uh, why did you feel so strongly about this? Why did you have such a passion for keeping hockey here in the city of Springfield? Well, I think because the... It did so well for me and my family. I, I was able, even during my playing days, being drafted by L.A. and play here in Springfield for three years. And then when I played for the Whalers for five years, I maintained my home in West Springfield. And I really became a part of the community. I only went back to Canada the one summer after I was married in 1971. Uh, I became part of the, the Western Mass area. And I think the more I got involved into the management side and the ownership, and I understood what it meant to the people of the Pioneer Valley. The pro team had been here since 1936, and I just did not want to see the team leave on my watch. And uh, and I so I did everything I could to make sure it didn't. And, and, and thanks to the support of a lot of people that stepped up uh, from an ownership uh, standpoint, we were able to do it. But it was a lot of hard work. But I think it's just, it was this became such a big part of my life and my family and enabled me to raise a family and have some success. And I felt I had to do my part to make sure this didn't, never did leave this area. People probably don't realize how difficult uh, it was to accomplish this. Uh, when uh, the Indians were leaving town, you had to come up with an investment group to keep the, uh, the, the uh, professional hockey here in Springfield. How difficult was that challenge? It, it seemed like it was almost a day-to-day -day crisis to try to get the, the investment investors in to keep the team in Springfield. Well, it was initially, and thanks to my good friend Wayne Lachance, who had heard about the, the Indians being sold and called me up after I had said, stuck my size 10 in my mouth, said I was going to keep hockey in Springfield and didn't have the money or anything to do how I was going to do it. Wayne called me up and said, do you really want to do this? So Wayne got involved and very quickly we had about a couple weeks to put an ownership group together and we were able to accomplish that thanks to some good people who got involved with us and uh, we were able to do it and it was, it was a heck of a challenge and it remains a challenge because making money uh, and the American Hockey League level is not an easy thing. And uh, we were able to have some success early on with some good teams in the ice, and then we hit some bad years. But uh, overall, it, it's a challenge. It's a challenge right now. I mean, the Thunderbirds are doing a phenomenal job, but it's a challenge. Your thoughts on the future of the Thunderbirds and the future of professional hockey in Springfield, is it viable? Will it last? Well, I think it's viable, and it starts with ownership. Uh, there's no question about it. It starts with ownership. And, and Paul Picnelli, um, 
and the ownership group he's put together are very strong. They're committed. They're passionate about the city of Springfield. And you never say never because the dynamics and the landscape of the league changes so much. But Springfield has weathered a lot of storms. And the Thunderbirds, through the guidance of Nate Costa as their president, they're doing a phenomenal job in their marketing and their and the, and putting a big staff together and doing great job a great job at the, at the Mass Mutual Center. But there's always lease negotiations. There's affiliation deals. There's a lot of things that go behind the scenes that have to come to place. But I, I, there's no question in my mind the hockey team is here for a long, long time.